Um, okay, so I do want to get a little deeper with you because I feel like what what really interested me in your story was um, specifically that accident that you had gotten in. How many years ago was that? It was um, November 2009. So it's 2000. Okay. It's so it's minute. been quite a bit. Yeah. And what I thought was so interesting listening to another podcast that you were on, I can't even remember which one at this point, you were talking about how um, like the injury that you went through with your brain caused like lasting effects that you still deal with today. And I think that's really important for people to know. Um, and to understand. So could you kind of talk my listeners through um, what happened to you? Yeah, I mean, so basically how it happened, I was at a friend's apartment building, we were on the roof, and I sat on a skylight, which sounds dumb, but it was a big skylight. And back then, I was a lot smaller (laughs) than I am now and didn't think I would break it, but I did. And I fell about 25 feet. I don't remember the accident. Thank God for trauma, amnesia. But yeah, so I fell and I broke my jaw and my collarbone and pretty much all of my ribs on the right side. And I hit my head. I had a subdural hematoma, which is bleeding of the brain in the back of my brain. And, you know, researching or finding out a little bit more of like the sort of long-term effects of brain injury, you know, started to make sense in a lot of things that it can be, you know, uh, it can affect your personality and behavioral patterns. It can change your sort of, uh, mood, (laughs) your reaction, Mm -hmm. you know, your anger, how you deal with anger. And, you know, it's, it's, so it became, it came, came really hard to sort of navigate my emotions when they become heightened and um, relate to people. When I become emotionally charged, I had a hard time understanding other people's sides of things and understanding my own feelings in, in pertaining to issues, you know, and having, you know, people understand that. And I didn't feel like myself. I didn't, I, I was somebody that was relatively even keeled. And, you know, even though I was opinionated and, and sassy and I always kind of had a sharp tongue, you know, it was always me. I I didn't have the kind of rage in me that I was experiencing. Hmm. Yeah, that's kind of the gist of it. That's <laughs> fascinating. I think I'm just so curious. So did you, you noticed like after the accident that you were handling situations like way differently than you would have, let's say, prior to the accident? Yeah. I mean, it was like, it was over time. It was over. It's not something that I like, it just occurred to me one day because, you know, I was so focused for six months. I had my jaw wired shut. I obviously was like feeling healing physically for a good portion of the time. And so focused on that, like I didn't think about the emotional mental healing that was going to be taking place. um, That, you know, sort of would come up over time. And, you know, there's, there's like PTSD and survivor's guilt that comes with it. And so it was just sort of like, it would come in like bouts, you know, um, Mm -hmm. and just sort of getting kind of finding footing in life again, and just not understanding a lot of things. And, and yeah, you just, you just start to get the sense that like, this doesn't feel like me that like, it feels like out of body almost Mm -hmm. and not connecting. No, I think that makes sense. And I also, I feel like you, and I have the worst memory because I watch the show, but I never know timeline of anything. It's like in one year and out the other. I, <laughs> I, all I know is that you didn't bring it up on the show until a few seasons in. Am I correct with that? I mean, yeah, I, I, I definitely like talked about it, but it's like I didn't want it to be like my like trump card or something that I yeah. always talked, you know, that was became an excuse or anything like that. But it definitely played into a lot of the reasons why I behave the way I am or just am the way I am. Um, But yeah, it didn't really come on the show as like a topic of conversation till later, even though it was something that was known about amongst my friends, I guess the general public didn't learn about it till later on. (laughs) Yeah, I think that's what I was surprised to learn. I was like, wait, wow. I can't believe this has never come up until now. So I think it was actually really smart that you didn't play it as like a poor me, which some people probably would have done because you don't have that outlook towards it. It's I feel like it's like something that happened to you and it's something you're living with versus you're not going to get 
sympathy from people. But I think when you said it, it was an eye opening. It was eye opening for the public to be like, wow, she's been through this really traumatic, awful thing. Yeah, I think, you know, it's because it was something that I was still working through and learning about and unpacking um, and not, you know, fully understanding for a really long time. So to speak on it, it, you know, it's it's hard to do. And, it, you know, when I don't fully understand it to make other people understand it, you know, and being so young and faced with your own mortality is is a lot to deal with. It's heavy enough for one person and wanting to kind of put that on people constantly was not something I wanted to do. It, you know, my my family went through a lot when I went through that and it was really traumatic for them. So it's something I just didn't want to bring up all the time, you know. It's heavy. Yeah. No, that's so true. And like like little funny story about <laughs> this making me realize something in my own life. So my friend Sam and I were in Paris for Fashion Week about two years ago, oh, let's say. Love Paris. I know. And we met up with this photographer that's known for taking pictures of people in the sickest locations. Like you're on top of a roof and the Eiffel Tower is behind you and it's just stunningly beautiful. So we meet this guy. He speaks French. We can hardly communicate with him. He grabs a ladder and he's like, okay, like walk up the steps. So we walk up like 10 stories of an apartment building in the middle of Paris. And when we get there, he puts the ladder up to like a, um, what's it called? Like, what did you fall through? What's it called? A, skylight. Uh, skylight. He puts it up, opens the skylight, and we climb out onto the roof. And because I had seen the episode where you talked about falling through, my friends and I, when we got up to the roof, for like a split second, she like sat on the glass of the skylight oh, no. and we were up top and I because of you I was like get off I was like don't do that get off and I knew instantly like god forbid we were fine but it even taught me in that very moment like I reacted because of your story so wow. it's <laughs> yeah it's really crazy and I, I remember that moment because I was scared and also like it was so dangerous what we were doing to begin with like we were up on this little narrow roof with the guy that we didn't know it was like really crazy but because of you I honestly was like smarter in that situation I feel than I would have been <laughs> isn't that <I'm>, wild <laughs> well yeah because had you not known maybe you would have done it and not thought of anything of it I because, wouldn't have thought because you know you wouldn't think like it would break even though it's kind of maybe seems obvious to other people it's, it's but not. you're like it's on a roof it's sturdy it's part of the structure yeah exactly so I just had to share that because it like actually was a wake-up call for me <laughs> oh, which God. is so funny you no know, because you share stuff on tv and you're like I don't know if anyone's gonna relate to this and something even just like a small detail sometimes someone takes it and they remember it and it impacts their life so wow isn't that crazy <laughs> 